This is QD Clinic ACR 2022. Today we're going to discuss a case and refer it to an abstract at the meeting. The case is a gentleman I saw, oh, probably about three or four months ago, 61, white, comes in, first time evaluation, um, previously self-managed, saw his PCP, sent to me. He's got pain in his and swelling in his hands. When you ask him his story, it's about six, seven years. It's mainly in both hands. It's mainly DIPs, some PIPs, but mainly the DIPs. Um, and again, nothing seems to help. He's tried over-the-counter stuff. His doctor gave him a course of steroids. That didn't really make a big difference. He's being referred to me for rheumatoid or methotrexate or something like that. So again, it's predominantly DIP disease. It looks like OA, and of course I get x-rays. Well, first off, I ask him, you know, associated diseases, comorbidities, other medicines, really nothing. He has no nail changes, no psoriasis. Um, and this has been chronic uh, for some time. He says that he does get redness and some swelling. He says that his stiffness is usually 30 to 60 minutes every day. Um, and that really nothing gives him relief. He's currently taking naproxen over the counter. So we do laboratory tests on him. They're all normal, chem panel, CBC. His sed rate's 31, his CRP was normal. His serologies are negative. His uric acid's normal. X-rays show, yeah, OA, but really it shows erosive OA. You know, that seagull wing, central erosions, reactive bone on the side, pretty typical going on in uh, several of the DIPs and one of the PIPs. So this man has erosive OA. Oh my goodness, what do we treat him with? I don't know about you, but really nothing works. I know you all have your little trick, your little game, but uh, you know, the data is pretty clear. DMARDs don't work. And that includes methotrexate, that includes hydroxychloroquine. We Every year we get a few new studies that re recreate the past showing how bad they are. Oh, by the way, biologics don't work. IL-1 inhibitors, TNF inhibitors, IL-6 inhibitors, almost everything's been tried and nothing works in inflammatory erosive OA. I'm talking OA that's got erosive changes in it and intermittent inflammation, sometimes overt inflammation. You know, and again, uh, what's the best thing you can do? Previous to this report I'm going to discuss, my best regimen was a little bit of low-dose prednisone, 3 to 5 milligrams with hydroxy, with uh, uh, not hydroxychloroquine, sorry, with acetaminophen, long-acting acetaminophen, up to 3,000 milligrams a day, and then, you know, compressive taping uh, using Coban, uh, that stretch tape, um, that seems to work sort of, sort of as a immobilization. Those joints are hard to inject. I don't inject them. Again, it's we just don't have anything that works. Well, maybe we do have something now. And this is going to be presented when? On um, Monday, the last day of the meeting, November 14th. Abstract number L05. And this is from uh, Witoke and colleagues the effect of denosumab on structure modification in erosive hand OA. Are you kidding me? Uh, bisphosphonate. I thought this was exciting because way back, my goodness, going back into, I think, the late 90s, we were involved in a protocol looking at residronate um, as a potential agent to retard the erosions, uh, retard the development of erosions in RA patients. Um and it turns out that that did not work. I don't think it was really well studied, but nonetheless, it didn't work. Here, this is a placebo versus um, standard dose denosumab in 100 patients with erosive OA. The primary outcome was x-rays, the Ghent University score, the GUS score, basically. And they were looking at that. The primary endpoint was, 24, was uh, six months, and they looked at it at one year. Uh, and they also looked at a uh, development of new erosive joints over time. And guess what? Yeah, denosumab, significantly less erosive progression, significantly fewer new erosive joints 
at both 24 and 48 weeks. This is kind of exciting because we don't have a disease modifying agent for osteoarthritis, a D mode. And would this now qualify? I think it would. However, this is just a 100 patient single center study. It'll be really interesting to see how this pans out over time. Be interesting to see, again, what were the patient characteristics? We don't know that. We're gonna have to look, go to the presentation on, um, uh, what did I say it was, Sunday? Uh, Monday, the, the, uh, uh, on the 14th, and see really what the patients were like. Maybe, are these really RA? They called, oh, you know, you're also like, oh wait, we need to look at the data, right? So, um, Again, you can follow ACR. Room Now has been going to have a gargantuan effort. I really, uh, I focus real hard this year on real-time coverage. You can get podcasts the same day of the meeting. You have those daily recaps. I want to point you to the topic uh, panel discussions. We're going to have a topic panel discussion on RA, on lupus, on PSA, on AS, on four nights, 7 p.m. If you're a rheumatologist, you're going to get the webinar invite, and you can watch it on Zoom. And ask your questions there. If you're not going to get the invite, you can watch us on our website, on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and uh, our YouTube channel. 7 p.m. Eastern Time, starting Sunday night. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And then the last night, that same slot's going to be reserved for uh, Artie, Kavanaugh, Artie Kavanaugh and I doing the rheumatology roundup, something we've been doing for almost 20 years. Uh, we have fun. We think you'll have fun. Tune in for real-time coverage at ACR in the next few days.